Have you ever heard of this saying that a calorie is a calorie and believed it? Perhaps you've tried very calorie restricted diets in the past for this very reason. You know, the ones that have you count every single calorie eaten during the day and limit you to tiny portion sizes of certain foods? Sure, it works for a season by reducing your total daily caloric intake, but constant macros and calorie counting becomes exhausting to keep up long term. So, is it all just about the calories? And should we just assume that all calories are equal? Not quite. There's definitely more to this story, and I want to tell you about it. In this episode, I'll show you why we can't treat calories from different foods all the same. Curious to find out more? Then tune in. I'll meet you on the inside. Welcome to the Plant Based Eating Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Anna Zin. Plant based registered dietitian and transition coach. Hi, friend. Do you want to regain your health with plant based eating but feel overwhelmed and lost about how to do it? Do you feel it'll be hard to change your meat heavy diet and impossible with working, running the home, or chasing after the grandkids? If so, you're in the right place. Here you'll find simple strategies, clear nutrition guidance, and practical tips to help you thrive plant powered with more energy. So if you're ready to ditch the guesswork and transform your health the stress-free way, cozy up now with a hot cup of tea or listen while you walk and let me show you how doable plant-based eating can be. Let's do this. Hi friend, have you been struggling in your diet transition, like really struggling? It's been a few weeks and you're still feeling lost and overwhelmed. You're trying to eat plant-based, but it's been a struggle to stay consistent and the scale doesn't seem to be moving. Your health problems are still there too, and you're getting tired of taking all the prescribed meds every single day. You don't know what you're doing wrong, and it all feels so discouraging and defeating that you want to throw in the towel. You can't help wondering, isn't plant-based eating supposed to help me gain energy, feel better, and look better? It is and it will, but you may just need a little bit of extra support and guidance to get you there. So if you've been struggling with your weight and health issues and don't know how to eat plant-based in a way that will turn your health and weight around, let's connect so I can help. Send me an email at healthnow@plantnourish.com or apply for a free rapid health transformation call with me using the links in the show notes. I want to use the power of whole plant-based foods to help you reach your best health and weight. Now let's talk about calories and eating plant-based. Some of you listening right now may have a fear or worry. A fear that eating more carbohydrates will cause weight gain and worsen blood sugars and diabetes. And so this translates into a fear about eating many foods on a plant-based diet like beans, whole grains, lentils, and fruit. Worse still, not only do these foods have more carbohydrates than many animal-containing foods, they're also seen as containing a good amount of calories. So there's this worry or fear to eat these foods because they may cause you to pack on the weight with the added calories and carbs. Well, I think we have to thank mainstream media, the internet, and popular fad diets like the keto and paleo diets for this because this fear-mongering around carbohydrates is unnecessary and untrue. As it turns out, there really needs to be a distinction in terms of the kinds of carbohydrates that are eaten. Because yes, there are different kinds. I've touched on this in a few previous past episodes and hope to talk more about it. But if you're interested in that, refer to the past episodes which I'll link in the show notes for you. But today, I want to talk about the calories side of the concern. Perhaps you're wanting to start or have started and worry that with eating more plant-based foods, you'll pack on the calories and gain weight. Well, that's unlikely to happen. And here are just three reasons out of many why all calories are not created equal. Here's the first reason. Calories can differ by volume. This means that there can be two plates, each containing a combination of foods with the same amount of total calories, 
but of vastly different portion sizes. For example, let's compare a plate with three standard-sized Oreo cookies to another plate with a cup of bean salad containing string beans. These would both provide about 160 calories, but one cup of the bean salad would be a much larger portion and pack a whole lot more volume than just three Oreo cookies, though both have the same total calories. Because of the greater volume from the bean salad, you would also likely feel fuller with slightly more stretching of your stomach than compared to just having three Oreos. In fact, it's easy to treat the Oreos as just a snack and then eat more food as part of a meal later, and hence take in more food and calories. Do you see what I mean? Let's move on to reason number two. Calories can differ by nutrient density. This is another big reason why all calories are not created equal. To show you this, let's go back to that Oreo versus bean salad example I gave earlier. First, what would three Oreo cookies provide? It would give you about 160 calories, 2 grams of saturated fat, less than a gram of fiber, 14 grams of added sugar, and 1 gram of protein. Now what about the cup of bean salad? This, on the other hand, will provide 164 calories, but no added sugar, more than 5 grams of fiber, a gram of saturated fat, and 5.3 grams of protein, plus a whole bunch of other micronutrients. So the bean salad would provide a whole lot more nutrition than that in three Oreo cookies. That's why, depending on the food or meal in question, the same amount of calories can give you very different amounts of macro and micronutrients for your body. Now here's a third reason. Calories can differ by how they are absorbed and digested. Under laboratory conditions, a calorie may be a calorie when strict control conditions are applied. But this is not the case in the real world in terms of how our bodies process the foods we eat. As an example, let's compare two other foods, apple juice versus broccoli. 100 calories worth of a standard store brand 100% apple juice would be under 7 ounces, so little over 3 quarters of a cup of juice the equivalent to that of one juice box. A hundred calories of raw broccoli, however, would mean three and a quarter cups of chopped broccoli. Now, besides deferring in volume and nutrient density, which one do you think will be absorbed and digested faster? It'll definitely be the apple juice. Because of its high simple sugar but low fiber content, it'll be digested and absorbed into the body much easier and faster not to mention will be fast to drink too. On the other hand, the three and a quarter cups of raw chopped broccoli will take a little while to chew and swallow, and then these pieces will take longer to be broken down for the nutrients to be absorbed. A component of the broccoli is also insoluble fiber. This will be processed but will not be absorbed into the body, but will pass out of the body as part of the stools. So besides making your body expend more energy to break down the broccoli into digestible components, you're likely not going to get a full 100 calories worth from the broccoli actually absorbed into your system. This is also why juices are often recommended as a measure to combat hypoglycemic episodes or when there is a situation of a low blood sugar level. Because of its ability to be absorbed through the intestinal wall fast to enter the bloodstream, and help correct the low blood sugars. So calories can differ by how foods are actually broken down, absorbed, and digested in our bodies. So today we looked at just three reasons, out of many, why all calories are not created equal. First, calories can differ by volume. Second, they can differ by nutrient density. And third, there can be differences in how or what is actually absorbed into our body and system. So as you can see, a calorie in is not necessarily a calorie absorbed. There's a lot more that goes on in your body than what is simply observed under strict scientific laboratory conditions. If you've been struggling trying to lose weight on a plant-based diet, I don't want you to get disheartened. 
it's more likely that there are things that just need to be tweaked in the way you are eating plant-based to make sure that you are really eating in the best way possible to optimize a plant-based diet to reach your weight goals faster. Because not all plant-based diets are the same. So don't stay discouraged or defeated. Let's troubleshoot it together. Like what I do with the clients I see in my Plant Nourished Weight Accelerator coaching program. We'll figure it out and help you gain more confidence and enjoyment eating plant-based in the process. Reach out to me at healthnow at plantnourished.com or see the link in the show notes to apply for a free rapid health transformation call. I can't wait to connect with you. Thank you for listening to the Plant-Based Eating Made Easy podcast. If this podcast has helped you, please take a moment to rate and leave a written review on the Apple Podcast app or on iTunes. Knowing how this podcast has made a difference in your life never fails to light me up. I may also select your review to be read on the show. Remember that moving to plant-based eating can be simple and doable, even with your existing health challenges and busy lifestyle. If you have a plant-based diet question you'd like me to answer on this show, share that question with me using the contact options in the show notes. Thanks for joining me today, and I can't wait to connect with you again in the next episode. Until next time, keep plant-focused and thriving, my friend.